Facebook, the infamous social networking site, has approximately 12 million Canadian users alone, along with about 200 million users around the globe, according to the Washington Post. Facebook satisfies a variety of different users because of its ability to connect them to a social network quickly and easily. The social network is complete with a news feed informing the user of what their friends are up to, instant chats, and access to private and public profiles of other users. Millions of individuals share personal information about themselves on a daily basis, but where does our private information really go when it enters the cyberspace? As far as we know, it clutters the home feed page of Facebook so that others can read and comment on our personal lives. Although users are aware that others are reading their personal thoughts and comments, the majority of them believe that it is only our confirmed friends that can access our personal information. The question raised about Facebook, one of the largest social networks in the media industry today, questions whether or not they, being the social networking giant, know too much about us, its users. Sure, Facebook has privacy settings so users can protect their personal information from those who they do not want to see it, but how private is Facebook really? Just recently, Facebook changed its security and privacy settings without informing the mass population of its users. Those who had limited profiles and thought that only their friends could access their private information were sorely mistaken. And by not informing its users, Facebook exposed a lot of people without their permission. Due to its privacy policies, Facebook has received much scrutiny since its launch back in February of 2004, when Mark Zuckerberg and co-founders Dustin Miskovich, Chris Hughes, and Eduardo Saverin launched Facebook from their Harvard dorm room. The social networking site has almost compiled as many privacy policy infractions than it has members since the launch back in 2004. Most notably, the breaches within Canadian privacy law set by the Office of Privacy Commissioner of Canada. There are many privacy concerns that Facebook has been documented for ignoring, such as how the social networking site shares its users' personal information with the creators who develop applications for the site, such as games and quizzes, in a way that breaches with the Canadian privacy law. When Facebook users choose to access games and applications, they are prompted to share their information. When users accept the application, they are sharing not only their personal information with the developers of the games and quizzes, but they are also sharing their friends' names, profile pictures, gender, user IDs, and any other content which they have not activated limited privacy settings upon. Facebook will also make information about the location of your computer or access device, as well as your age, available to applications and websites. Their justification of sharing your private information with the developers of games and quizzes is so that they can implement appropriate security measures and control the distribution of age-appropriate content. Benjamin Eldman, a Harvard Business School professor, spoke out about Facebook, stating that, according to his findings, Facebook provides its advertisers with more information about its users than they claim in their privacy policy, and users have no way of opting out of the information sharing. Eldman also states that when new users first join Facebook, their privacy settings are defaulted, and since many new users are unaware of how to change their privacy settings, they leave them the way the social network sets them up. With these default privacy settings, the advertisers can then see almost all of users' activities and connections to others on Facebook. Eldman also believes that Facebook shares data in ways users don't reasonably expect, due to confusing settings and frequently changing defaults. In a news document created by the Canadian Broadcasting System, CBC, the Office of the Privacy Commissioner's report found that Facebook continues to breach PIPEDA policies and regulations by not having enough safeguards to prevent almost a million third-party developers from all over the world obtaining unauthorized access to Facebook users' personal information. The article then goes on to state that the social networking site does not ensure its members have given their meaningful consent to permit their personal information to be unveiled to the creators of these applications. Therefore, instead of these application creators just obtaining the proper personal information they require in order to run the application on the user's account, these developers are more often than not criminally persuaded to use the Facebook member's personal information, such as their email address and mailing address for marketing purposes, or even worse, identity theft. Another policy concern is that Facebook also keeps personal information 
indefinitely after users deactivate their accounts, contrary to the Personal Information Protection and Electronics Document Act. In order for this policy concern to be regulated, Facebook needs to have a policy guideline to delete former users' account information after a reasonable length of time in the deactivation class. And Facebook users should be well aware of this policy if they decide to disable their social networking account. Facebook also allows users to provide personal information about non-users without their consent. For example, it allows them to tag photos and videos of non-users with their names and provide Facebook with their email addresses to invite them to join the site. Facebook then keeps these potential future users' addresses and information indefinitely as well. Facebook should only keep non-users' email addresses for a reasonable specific length of time and should make these regular users aware that they need to seek consent of non-users before posting information about them. This investigation was launched by the Privacy Commissioner's Office in response to a complaint from the Canadian Internet Policy and Public Interest Clinic, which is based right here at our University of Ottawa. Recent studies have shown that most people are unaware of the restricted profile. And one of the major reasons behind restricting a profile in the first place is because other people have restricted profile. When a Facebook user sees that a friend has a restricted profile, it disallows them to view it making them more aware that they also have that option. Facebook does not exploit the idea that the user of their extremely popular website can restrict their profile. It is instead shown in a small icon in the corner under the account button. In a sense, we are very fortunate to have our peers on Facebook because our social influence tends to, have, tends to be created from our relationships, according to Clandall, in a study created at Harvard University. When signing up to a Facebook account, there are hidden risks involving online judgment. People can judge another simply by what they see on another person's Facebook. And to prevent that, we are given the option to pr privatize our profiles. Study from Brittany and Hughes have shown that th the first three years, that setting was a failure. Information posted on a restricted profile would show up in searches unless the user chose to opt out his or her profile from the search. And the only way to have a real restricted profile was to completely eliminate yourself from, from the search engine, making it almost impossible for anyone to find you on Facebook, defeating the whole purpose of a social network. Facebook hasn't exactly made it easy to restrict a profile, not to mention the account settings are not very user-friendly, making the majority of people vulnerable to the risk Facebook has to offer. One of the risks has to do with how legitimate and real a person, person's account is. Studies from Jones and Soltron have shown that one-third of Facebook users should not be friend strangers on their account. When we are added by a stranger, it can be deceiving, and we may believe that the person is who they say they are on Facebook. For example, just because Snooki accepts you on Facebook doesn't exactly mean she wants to party with you. Now that we're talking about celebrities, another good example is Michael Phelps, who is seen on Facebook smoking illegal drugs, making him lose practically every endorsement he had because of Facebook exploitation. Poor guy. Another risk comes from third-party corporations to whom Facebook sells your privacy settings to. It is widely unknown what they do with that information besides advertising. Consider job applications. A job hiring company can see pictures, posts, and comments on your profile that can put a standstill on that job that you always wanted. Although thinking deeper, what if Facebook teamed up with a third party organization that deliberately went to your Facebook profile before even bothering with the interview process? It is without question that in today's modern world we put so much trust in social networks such as Facebook and Twitter, MSN, and even texting. We like to believe that our lives are very private, but we fail to consider our explicit usage of technology and what happens to our information in the time it takes to make its way from the sender to the receiver. The Facebook developers can access our information at any time they like at the click of a button. As Dr. Strangelove, a distinguished media industries professor at the University of Ottawa, discussed in class, we live in an age of access. This may not only mean that when it comes to media, we can access whatever we want, whenever we want. This also means that they can access information about us whenever they want as well. Individuals need to understand that we are only one small part of the social network, and in reality, we have no control over our privacy. Facebook is an explicit example of only one of the major social networks that dominates media industries today and exploits users' privacy on a regular basis. Yet millions of users continue to use it with the thought that their personal information is protected.